Hello, friends, you are doing well. Welcome to another edition. So, I will continue today about the location related impact on the software engineering itself. But this time, I will take a more tangible factor to consider, which is uh, in general, you can call it personal finance, but I will stitch it together with software engineering and how it impacts the uh, general team uh, as such. If you are listening to this uh, channel's content for the first time, this series is more like a podcast. So this is more like a conversation I'm trying to have with you. So there won't be any flashy content uh, to follow up. At most, there will be a couple of banners. If at all, I want to communicate something. But other than that, it's going to be a very simplistic content. So please <laughs> set your expectations accordingly. For the rest of uh, the educational content, you can check out the channel. It has a different flavor. So coming back to the point, as I mentioned in the uh, last stream of consciousness, if you would say, that uh, a lot of people are moving to urban centers just to stay in the software jobs and they never go back home. Now, this has a very severe implication when it comes to personal finance as well. Now, think of a, a person from a tier two city, which I mentioned last time, who had moved to an educational city for uh, getting better education and then move to certain places for better job opportunities and assume that that person stayed back in uh, India. Now, software as a source of income comes with the expectation that they would improve the quality of life for their parents who are living in tier 3 cities maybe or in tier 2 cities and they want to upgrade their lifestyle to tier 1. And it's a valid aspiration as well. But what happens is that when somebody brings their parents into a tier one city and uh, they start a family as well around the same time. So I'm talking about a span of five or seven, five to seven years. Now, the expenses have shot up exponentially. A lot of uh, the security relies on the health insurance and uh, that creates a kind of a, a very a scary situation because in households who have a one income or maybe two incomes at most two incomes in this case three generations are bound to those two incomes now here there is another factor which i am not trying to bring up because it is a, a separate discussion in itself if you consider a working woman in india who has a, who is living with her in-laws Right? The kind of challenges her parents face and the kind of dependencies they have, the kind of lifestyles they will have if they are dependent on her are a very separate set of uh, discussions. They tend to move towards a different kind of factor considerations at a societal level. So I won't go over there. But the thing is that when the employers are providing benefits, they are not taking into consideration the amount of stress that is getting built up in that particular individual's life and how certain benefits cannot be generalized for everyone, right? So uh, if you think about the uh, basic uh, needs as they increase once the parents move into the tier one city. So like even if they are moving for a couple of months, the amount of disruption that causes in that person's life is going to trickle into the uh, work life as well right so everyone has a different threshold to manage these kind of things and this uh, particular uh, ability to suppress that kind of a stress comes at a cost everyone deals with it differently uh, and trust me not uh, everyone is able to handle it right and this kind of stress build up affects uh, what is going to happen with the software they are working with right so because i genuinely believe that software building decent or good software is all about continuity if your thought process is continuous you will be able to spot a lot of possibilities up front and not make those mistakes mistakes will still happen because it is part of human nature but then the caliber of mistakes and the quality of mistakes has to be uh, measured as well. It is very hard to measure, but trust me, based on experience, you can build this instinct that somebody who is stressed is bound to make trivial mistakes, right? And the, they are under the kind of stress which they cannot 
probably they cannot express many might not be able to identify as well that it is their aspiration which is causing their stress now it is a very uh, difficult uh, thing to digest that you have created your own problems right so uh, everyone uh, tends to think of it like uh, no, no, the, there is a fixed template you need to do this you need to get a degree you need to get a job you need to get a house you need to have kids you, then you need to uh, take care of the kids education then and then you retire at 60 but like i mentioned in the uh, previous conversation and i'll continue to remind that software engineering careers are much shorter uh, i think 15 years mark is stretching it uh, if you look at the majority the median age is constantly decreasing i think it is reaching a point where it will stabilize because everyone beyond that age i think it will increase uh, the median age will increase because the lower uh, age groups will keep getting uh, replaced by ai because those were mostly the tasks given to uh, that group are kind of potential for automation and uh, ai is getting better at it but that's a technical discussion let's not go there but basically the point is that with this kind of movement in the industry uh, automation taking place the salaries will also get impacted in the next three to five years and uh, the personal planning which is required unfortunately we are never trained for it and that is the problem which uh, i try to solve through one of my courses which is actually the most uh, risky thing uh, like a personal finance from business perspective thing why would an engineer software engineer be talking about personal finance and that's the thing that as someone who has been through that journey firsthand uh, of course in my case the factors were very different the kind of loan i was dealing with education loan and all those things the point is that uh, survival but once you start thinking in terms of survival you start realizing that you can take far fewer risks Right? The more number of dependents you have, the people cannot afford to take risks, which basically means that they stop disagreeing. And to write good software, you require a team who is willing to disagree because that's where you are going to find the best middle ground. And that's where the problem lies to a certain extent, in my opinion, that if you want to build high caliber products, you have to invest in the uh, stability of social life of the employees which comes at a great cost it is expensive for example I'll give you a simple example companies say that okay you can uh, go to a gym whichever gym you want the amount they specify you cannot afford to go to the best gym which has the best equipment which basically means that uh, you won't get access to personal trainers you won't get access to a dietitian or nutritionist that's a separate problem that the uh, gym instructor will try to sell you protein powders. The dietitian will tell you to buy everything organic. And then you have to go to a grocery app which uh, will give you 100 options. And then you have to choose the right option. And the amount of time they are spending in doing these things is actually a waste of time. Because uh, it is not increasing their quality of life by much. Right? So employers cannot directly step into this, but the amount of time they are asking out of people from their personal lives, I think what is being given back just in terms of money is not enough. Or telling people that, okay, you can go on a vacation, uh, we'll give you uh, 14 or 15 days of uh, paid time out and that's all you will have. And in return, we will take 200, and two, 200 or 250 days of your personal life. Uh, I don't think it's fair, uh, but again, it's legal. So fairness doesn't uh, come into equation, <laughs> I suppose. But the point is, a uh, point I'm trying to make is that the personal financial awareness should become part of the job onboarding because uh, at an educational system level, I don't think any reforms will happen soon. But at a, a job training, these things can improve hire independent financial advisors and have the uh, freshers go through a financial planning exercise up front because uh, the thing is that many of them have aspirations or at least used to have things might be changing now 
that I will, uh, I mean, the student would say that I will work for two years and pursue MS, someone like me who did it. It's a different thing that I did those two years of job with 100% dedication as well because I tend to like programming. There's no other moral reason. It is just as simple as that. That I, I sleep better if I uh, do whatever I have committed to doing. So I would rather burn out than uh, try to optimize my way out of something. But it's, a, it's my nature. So I don't hold anyone... Uh, I mean, I don't really think it's it matters if somebody is doing their job without being interested. It's allowed, so they are free to do so. But uh, the thing is that personal financial planning has to be part of the initial onboarding as well. And I'll tell you why it matters. Because somebody who understands money will be good at business. Right? And understanding money means uh, basically you one needs to understand where the costs are uh, justified, right? This is how technical debt needs to be tackled because uh, it is very difficult to tell someone that uh, I'll make a release in which no feature is going and it will just be crashed. You One has to explain very clearly that why this is an investment, why moving to a new compiler means that these build times will reduce by this much, the execution time will reduce by this much, the static analysis will improve by this much and this is where we will be saving engineering costs. So if one can actually calculate that I would be reducing the engineering effort by 40 hours in this particular calendar year, then it's an easier sell. And trust me, it's a personal finance kind of a thing as well. So here, here's a small experiment. You can try, uh, I mean, you can try these things uh, as you wish. Try to reduce sugar and oil uh, intake by uh, taking control of your uh, diet. If you want to take control of your diet for the next one month, so try to check what all places you are consuming your sugar and oil from and uh, try to keep them in check. So if you are uh, taking whatever so once you measure that thing you can cut down on it and within a month or so you will notice a difference in your overall uh, health it's not a very uh, significant thing but you it is noticeable and it's a very small uh, thing you have changed which is basically you have just controlled the supply of two elements you haven't worked out more or anything else just reduce these two things so this is how the micro uh, benchmarking and all those things work as well in software engineering. So now the thing is that if somebody is stressed because of their personal finance situation, they are not going to be alert enough to spot these small things. Right? So they are just doing their job to pay their bills. They don't care. And that's where the problem lies that a lot of people don't care. And you need somebody uh, who is alert enough to just do their job sincerely. You don't want them to uh, love programming or anything, but you just want them to be alert enough when they are doing their job. And I think the biggest problem or hurdle in software engineering as of now, when you think of it from a last mile perspective, or even in Bali, I think there is a huge layer of people who are suffering from the same problem. It is that the personal finance in their life is causing so much stress that they are unable to deliver good quality. And this is where the employers need to step in in, form, uh, in, in some form. There is a reform required here. The number of layoffs that are happening, that is simply, it was imminent, but uh, it is not leading to any reforms. The situation is same as at, as it was in 2000 after the internet bubble burst around 20 years ago. How has the life improved? How have the employers started stepping in and improving lives? Giving people subsidized food and all those things, that is just the top tier which is uh, sold to people as PR. I'm not saying they should stop it, but when cost cutting happens, is it, uh, I mean, what would you rather do? Stop serving coffee or fire 100 people? That's the choice which I'm talking about. This 
kind of a choice somebody cannot make uh, on their personal finance finance front whether to i mean how do you downgrade a lifestyle it's very very hard and not everyone is spending all the money on a lavish lifestyle as i said they are upgrading the lifestyle for the previous generation right they are trying to improve the lifestyle of their next generation when three generations are bound to that one single employment contract it's uh, that there has to be some responsibility which the employers uh, need to take which improves the quality of life of employees on a daily basis i know i'm asking uh, for something which sounds revolutionary but uh, i think it's time that things start changing so do give it a thought until next time